everyone watching this who's been following me for a while knows that in many respects I gave this concept a lot of credence because some things still don't make a lot don't make sense to me that would make sense if you would trust the plan but trust the plan required so many feints so many false flags so many permits of lawlessness and injustice to take place for such extended amounts of time that you it would be a, a, almost the worst kind of big brotherism i mean imagine a world where we said we know that an election is going to be stolen through f widespread fraud based on email ballots and hijacking election software. But we're going to let that election go through and take place, even though we know about it, which would make sense because we've had all these years to investigate it, so it doesn't make sense that we know about it. But we're going to let it happen so that then we can arrest a bunch of people and have really, really good evidence. Guys, if you knew that much about it, you would have pretty good evidence well before the election. You could have stopped it, you would have stopped it. See, you're saying to me, but Ram, we don't have confidence in these institutions anyway. So what's your point? No, it would be worse. It would, it would be worse. Now we know not to trust them. Otherwise, we wouldn't know whether or not to trust them. And anytime things didn't go right, we would be saying, well, maybe they're doing it Maybe it's a trust the plan situation. The only plan we have to trust is democracy. Let's try it. Have you ever had your heart broken? Of course you have. And when you have, when it happens, you know the different ways it can happen. It feels as if Nothing can ever make you ever forget, right? You just can't imagine even ever being happy again. And it could very well be that for a lot of people, including people who are maybe a little more soft-hearted, as a friend of mine puts it, sensitive, that that heartbreak never really heals. But it heals enough, doesn't it? It heals enough that unless you really drill down, you move on. Too many people feel that way about the, the election. It's understandable to be disappointed. My heart was broken a little bit too. Our heart's broken for all kinds of reasons. We've got to realize life will go on. We're going to have some very substantial challenges ahead political, legal, civil, libertarian, moral, absolutely. Probably for a lot of people, there'll be financial challenges. But let's let the heartbreak start healing now. Just as we know that every heartbreak, eventually, we do get over. We don't have the luxury of dying from heartbreak. God made it that way. He allows us to forget the pain. So it's a tough day for a lot of us, right? Some of us had a tough night. I know a couple of people who had a tough night. Right this morning, sun rises every day. The moon goes through its phases. I 
I was pretty happy for a while. I really thought a certain kind of happiness could be mine. I don't think a lot of other people felt that way too. But people change, things happen, people are affected by change, hurt by change, threatened by change, or imprisoned by an inability to change, sometimes of their making and sometimes really beyond their control, maybe as a result of choices they made or choices made for them. Be that as it may, the sun's out again. Our hearts are broken. Mine is. But that doesn't make me stop caring. If I ever cared, I've got to care now. I've got to care now. And if I didn't care before, then my heart belongs to me. It deserves to be broken, right? If it's true what you said and what you hoped for, what you felt, it should be every bit as true today. You've got to manage it differently. But we can do this. This is a, a little bit of a, an awkward message this morning because I did a two minute car talk, I guess it was last week, where I said, you might wanna walk away from politics and politics isn't walking away from you, right? So get up, do what you gotta do, et cetera, et cetera. And a friend of mine said, that's fine, Ron. But people also have to realize that anyone who's looking for salvation from politics is gonna be disappointed. And that's also true. Uh, my challenge this morning is not only reconciling those things, that's, that's a piece of cake. I'll get to that in a second. The problem is I always try to have a positive message because I find that people for some reason come away from these two minute car talks feeling that to the extent that they comment on them at all, they like them and they feel that they're, that they're affirmative. So, Woody Allen once said, I don't have a positive message I can leave you with, but you take two negative messages. I'm not there yet. I will say this. As my friend said, politics is not the meaning of life. It's a form of social organization, sometimes cooperation, sometimes coercion, almost always a combination of both. People who make politics their religion are going to be disappointed unless they're terrible people <laughs> isn't that something it's almost inevitably the case uh, politics can result in great things and in terrible things but it's not life life is the people around you the people you need to appreciate the people you need to love it really is You can be beatified in the church of politics, but you cannot be saved. But anyway, time to get a little more practical, right? We got a little mushy gushy this week. We are now in the Biden administration. Very exciting. Why is it exciting? Because even on the first day first full day of work, the weakness, the inherent weakness, which I many times alluded to on Twitter, that was coming with this administration has been demonstrated. My friend Mike Cernovich was tweeting uh, on Inauguration Day, look, look how the Democrats have their game down. Right? They've completely transformed the website. They're perfect revolutionaries. They know how to uh, 
get going, plug in, marshal the assets of power, and move their agenda forward. And he is right. But, first of all, it's not entirely a fair conversation because their ideology is entirely about that. And they have always been controlling the assets of power and the techniques are being demonstrated and employed in the service of assets that they never lost, never ceased being under their control. But more importantly, and this is a really important point that we just, it's so easy for us to forget it, especially after the demoralizing events of the last couple of weeks or months perhaps. If the administration is incompetent, if its spokesperson can't even answer the most fundamental question about what the president is doing as opposed to what he's saying on the first day, let's just say I told you it would be fun. Good morning. Any opportunity. You know, we're all understandably cynical about the fact that uh, restrictions on lockdowns and civil liberties that were uh, ceded to the governors of various states by uh, the judiciary and the legislative branches um, are being relaxed. People think that that somehow has something to do with uh, the political changes that uh, were also ceded to the governors of the various states to enable. That's all true, but it's excellent news. And we should not be foolish and fail to appreciate that this little bit of liberty that our rulers are permitting us now, and hopefully it will continue, will not result in more important developments for us. Remember, there's something else going on. You'll notice people are talking about it in the last couple of days, which is that change has to take place on the local level. There are still conservative or non-insane versions of liberal legislatures around the country. They still have some power. They refuse to assert it during the election when they should have, but nonetheless, they still do, and they still can. They will only if there is requirement politically for them to do so. The re-weaving of the social fabric by people seeing each other again, interacting again in person, is of great importance to this. So let's take great advantage of it, because our liberty depends on it. Let's be friends again. Let's be social, human, civil again. When the spring comes, I'm going to be let's 58 be soon. Yeah, I know. Only 58, though. I think it would be fair to say that a person should expect that when he gets to this sort of age, that he's going to be astonished at how much has changed. A lot of people, and we're all guilty of this, will take for granted the good change, the amazing things that have changed for the better, and focus on the annoying change. Like what's considered a good gas price, right? Two dollars and twelve cents is good for gas. Now it's two thirty-five. <laughs> That's typical. That's the regular change. The hairline changed. That's how it is. That's growing old. That's fine. What we have here, however, is a kind of change that our, my parents, for example, who were born around 1940, those are minus, 
I did live them. You know, my father passed away about 10 years ago. My mother, thank God, is still with us. Once my mother came to this country from Cuba, things didn't change so much for her. We, on the other hand, are going through a kind of ethical change that her parents went through. That you read about in history. There are going to be a lot of adjustments, and there's going to be disruption in the coming years. I believe it. And I think not all of it is going to be positive. But we need to get ourselves a little bit more used to the idea, if we're going to succeed, securing our liberty once again, that there's going to be a lot more change than we like. Hello. I'm not telling you that I said it was going to be Wall Street, the financial sector, hedge funds. I am telling you that I did say the wheels were going to come off, that they had jumped the shark. Too many things have to remain under too much control. And yes, they got the election, they got the judiciary, they got the press, they got the social media. They didn't get the money. There's a lot they can do. They might even squeeze this one down, but the lid is not staying on. They jumped the shark. It might cost all of us a lot of money. If the whole market crashes down because of a lack of confidence, you know what the word con, like a con man, comes from? Confidence, it's a confidence game. We're all, we're all victims of the confidence game because our ability to hedge is nothing like the ability of, of really wealthy people to hedge. But it's coming down. The confidence will never be the same. Changes are going to happen. And if it's not this that's happening today, it's going to be something else that's happening tomorrow. And I said something else starting a couple days ago. What's happening in the market is a perfect parallel to what's happening with free expression. The big boys are being threatened by independent conduct, voices, power. They run to the government and other powers that be to shut them down. It'll work in the short term, but the con is over. We can do this. In fact, whether or not you realize it, we are doing it. When I say we, I don't mean me, I mean we, the people. We can do this.